this has nothing to do with Esau, but yet we got drug off into a text about Esau. But is the way to do that, we got taken to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. But if you look at Isaiah 28, which is commonly used as uh, a reason why we should jump to another place, look at what Isaiah 28 says in its context. So you've got these drunkards of Ephraim. You see this? And they're being discussed, and they're drunk, and they're saying this and saying that. And then if you look in a lot of translations, verse 9 is properly set off with quotation marks. Now, there's not quotation marks in the ancient Hebrew. I think we all understand that. But it's understood to be a quote from the people that Isaiah is bringing the judgment to. And that's why it makes sense the way the passage is constructed. Read verse 9 and 10 of Isaiah, which he used as a justification to go to the Esau text. To whom will he teach knowledge? See, it's talking about the messenger of Yahweh, Isaiah. That's who the, That's why it makes sense to show that it's the crowd quoting the people who don't like the message, quoting, because they're talking about him. And to whom will he explain the message? Those who are weaned from the milk, those taken from the breast, they're mocking him. They're saying, who are you going to teach? The babies? Because that's all the message is fit for in their mind. For it is, now they're going to describe the message as they mock it. It is precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. He is making their they, Isaiah is being made fun of as if he's teaching them baby talk. That's why it says, "To whom will he teach knowledge? To whom will he explain the message? Those who are waiting for the milk, those taking for the breast." It's mocking them. This is not some kind of uh, category or strategy for a biblical hermeneutic that you're supposed to jump around in this in this way. That's not what's being said at all. This passage should not be used that way because this is a mocking, scoffing response to a judgment oracle by Isaiah. And you can tell when you look at it because it says, to whom will he teach knowledge? To whom will he explain the message? So that was that's an improper use of that. And if that was the way we're supposed to interpret the Bible, that means uh, from the time until Moses all the way to Isaiah, Isaiah, God's people had to wait to know how to do it properly, that you're supposed to jump around like that. But that's not what it's saying at all. How many roads, too many signs, I can't read them. Wouldn't recognize the turn even if I seen it. Been driving all along, feel like I'm dreaming. Isaiah was never dealt with. He said, well, maybe if vocab doesn't like that, we can go to instead uh, the idea of two or three witnesses. It's not if I like it or not. It's is it saying what he is saying it's saying. Is it actually something that you're supposed to do to understand the text? The first time I looked at it, I looked at it in the ESV. Now I go to the NET just to show you a different translation. Isaiah 28. And when you look at the context, what do we see when we get to verse 9? This is interesting the way this translates this. Because in the NET, they understand the he here as the referent is being Yahweh. And so in their translation, they specify it for clarity. That is even further evidence if that's a correct translation, even he, because it's literally he and it's he, the word for he in Hebrew, that, that is there. The question is, is the referent Yahweh or Isaiah? Well, oftentimes the messenger is identified in a way with the Lord because it's the Lord's message. But either way, I want to bring this out to show you that this idea that this is an instruction for how you're supposed to actually deal with the scripture is based upon a misunderstanding because it is the scoffers mocking Isaiah and the Lord here. Isaiah 28, 9. Who is the Lord trying to teach? To whom is he explaining a message? Either way, you've got to deal with who the he is talking about there. Those just weaned from milk? Those just taken from their mother's breast? Indeed, they will hear meaningless gibberish, senseless babbling, a syllable here, a syllable there. That translation was the only one used as a question. It's not like that in the original King James. Go ahead. Mark. Well, but we're not looking at the King James. And and since we want to look at the Hebrew, I, I so I have I have it up. I want to show you what it says here. This is the textual note here on the NET. The meaning of this verse has been debated. Now, I want to show you what it says. So, so this is part of the debate. And this is literally the transliteration of the Hebrew here. The Hebrew characters for a little there and a little there are on the screen in my note. 
the, the note that's in the NET, the note I have on the screen. It's Kitzvav, Litzvav, Tzvav, Litzvav, Kav, Lakav, Kav, Lakav. It literally sounds like baby talk. That's what they're saying. That is the underlying Hebrew. It's clear they're mocking. This is not supposed to be the way you're supposed to interpret the Bible. That's why they translated it as a syllable here, a syllable there, because of what's underlying. Either way, not just looking at the underlying Hebrew, which clearly is imitating baby talk, you have to deal with the referent of the he, and that's why it can be translated as Lord. Either way, who's the he? This is not something in context that Isaiah is saying, here's the way to interpret the Bible. This is people mocking him. So that was never dealt with. It's not that I don't like it. It's that it's inaccurate.